The sixth video in the Tools of Chemistry unit is on dimensional analysis. Uh, dimensional analysis has several different names, not that we really need a name for it, it's really just a problem solving method. Uh, you might have heard it as uh, unit label or factor label method. Uh, unit analysis is another way to do it, or another way to say it, because it's all about the units that we have on measurements and how we manipulate them. Our learning targets for this video, uh, we want to describe and demonstrate the use of conversion factors in dimensional analysis. That will be the, the main topic of this first video, the first part of it. And, and then the second part, I'm going to split this into two parts, is use dimensional analysis to perform unit conversions. We are going to do some of this in this first video, uh, but, the, but the first video is more about uh, demonstrating how to use these conversion factors. There are hundreds of different resources on the web for dimensional analysis. Simply typing in dimensional analysis practice will get you hundreds of different sites. Uh, these are just a few that I happen to click on and they look good. Also, uh, this link here is actually the link uh, to a search on Khan Academy. Links to several different dimensional analysis videos and topics related to dimensional analysis. All right, so the first question is, what is dimensional analysis? Well, if you want a definition for it, not that it's really necessary, uh, but it is a problem-solving method that uses conversion factors to manipulate units. Remember, a unit you might consider a label. So, for example, 17.4 uh, meters, the unit there would be meters. Another thing you might be wondering is, what is a conversion factor? Well, a conversion factor, very simply, it is a fraction equal to 1. Fraction equal to 1. And we'll look at what exactly this means here in just a second. The format of all dimensional analysis problems, it will always look like this. Our answer is going to always be some number, so I'll use the pound sign, in some needed unit. We'll be asked for a specific unit uh, that we'll need. That value will be equal to some number with a given unit, and then we're going to need to take that number with the given unit and multiply by conversion factors. Maybe just one conversion factor, maybe several. That will always be the format for dimensional analysis. Now, as I said, the, the main point of this first video is really to focus in on describing and demonstrating the use of conversion factors. We're going to talk about these fractions equal to 1. Consider this for a second. If I write this statement, 7 is equal to 7, I think everyone would agree that that is, in fact, true. Now, just for uh, the ability to differentiate between 1, 7, and another, I'm going to label the first one 7a and the second one 7b. So if I take 7a divided by 7b, because 7 divided by anything divided by itself is 1, I'll get 1 here. Likewise, if I flip it around, 7b divided by 7a, that would also equal 1. Now if I multiply any number, I can pick any number I want to, and I multiply by either of these ratios, 7a over 7b or 7b over 7a, then I'm multiplying by 1. Here's what I mean by that. Say I took the number 5.5 and I multiplied that by 7 over 7. Now it doesn't matter which one's on top because they're both 7. Well, 7 over 7 is 1, so that's going to equal 5.5. And I could do it the other way around, and I'd still get 5.5. Now, you might be thinking, what, what does that have anything to do with these conversion factors? Well, here's a different example that will relate back to what we just wrote here. 
you learned at an early age that 12 inches is equal to one foot. 12 inches equals one foot. Now this looks exactly like this up here. Seven equals seven. 12 inches equals one foot. So if I take 12 inches over one foot, because these two things are equal, this fraction equals one. Likewise, I could flip it around. I could put one foot over 12 inches, and that would also equal one. Here is where we can use this equality and one of these two fractions that go along with it as a conversion factor. For example, say we had this question. I'll just write it here. How many inches are in 18.7 feet? Now, many of you could probably just go ahead and figure this out because you know there's 12 inches in a foot and you'd probably recognize it's a simple multiplication. But I want to use this example as a way of showing how we do the dimensional analysis. We are asked very specifically for a number of inches. So here's how I like to set these up. I'm going to write question mark inches because I'm looking for how many inches. And I want to know how many inches are equal to this number in feet, 18.7 feet. I'm going to take this number and I'm going to put a line under it to show that it's in the top of a fraction. Even We could put it over one. We don't need to put it there. It's understood to be there. And I'm going to multiply by a conversion factor to make this happen. And I'm going to multiply by one of these two conversion factors. In fact, I'm just going to show it both ways. First time I'll show it with that first conversion factor there, 12 inches over one foot equals, I'm going to leave that blank for now, we'll come back and fill it in. And then likewise, I'll do it over here, I'll write 18.7 feet times one foot over 12 inches. Now, you might be thinking it really doesn't matter which one it, we do because we're multiplying by one either way. The value in that it would be correct. Because we're multiplying by one, the value wouldn't change. However, it's about the unit. That's why we call it dimensional analysis or unit analysis. If I look at this second one, and I'm not even going to worry about getting an answer here as far as a number. If I think about the units, I have feet times feet over inches. Well, nothing cancels there, and that would leave me with a unit of feet squared per inch. Does that match what it is we were looking for that we set up here at the beginning? The answer is obviously no. We want to get a unit of inches. So this is not what we would want to do. If I look at the first way we set it up, I have feet times inches divided by feet. Well, we know from algebra that the same unit or the same uh, factor in the numerator and denominator of a fraction will cancel. So feet cancel and I'm left with inches, which is exactly what I wanted to find. So this is the correct way. Now as far as plugging it into your calculator, it's very simple. Anything on the top part of the analysis gets multiplied. Anything that runs along the bottom gets divided. So on this particular problem, I'll just show you my calculator here so you can see what I'm plugging in. I am simply going to hit 18.7 times, because the 12 is on top, times 12, and I could hit divided by 1, even though we know divided by 1 won't change it, but it is on bottom, so I could do that, divided by 1, and my calculator tells me 224.4. Write that down here. 224.4 inches. Question you might have is, what about all those sig fig, sig fig rules that we've learned? Do I have to apply those? The answer is yes. Now remember, we learned that equalities, defined equalities, like 12 inches equals one foot, that is exact, there are exactly 12 inches in one foot, that would be infinite number of sig figs. So the only measured value here is this 18.7 feet. That has three sig figs, so my answer should have three sig figs. So I'm going to round this for sig figs to the third sig fig, 224.4 would be 224 inches in three sig figs. And there is my answer. So the moral of the story here 
conversion factors are any fraction that's equal to 1. And we get those from equalities. If you have any equality, so quantity A, in this case 12 inches, equals quantity B, in this case 1 foot, and you divide one of them by the other, it will always equal 1. And then we can use them, either of those fractions, as a conversion factor to get units that we're looking for. All right, so these first few examples are relatively simple uh, dimensional analysis, and we're not going not gonna to work through every single one of these examples in this first video. Um, I'll, I'll work through the rest of them on the second video. Um, but the first few we're going to do are relatively simple, just so you can get a sense of how uh, this dimensional analysis works. All right, first example, we have how many minutes are in 268 seconds. So I'm looking for minutes. So I'm going to write question mark minutes. How many minutes equals 268 seconds. Now to go from seconds to minutes, we need an, a conversion factor, or an equality between seconds and minutes. Well, you know that 60 seconds equals one minute. There's our equality. The only question is, which of these values need to go in the denominator, which need to go in the numerator? Well, thinking about our units, I need seconds to cancel. So I'm going to put the 60 seconds on bottom and the one minute on top. Seconds cancel. And now I have minutes, which is what I was looking for. I simply need to plug it into my calculator. Okay, so remember, everything on top of the analysis gets multiplied. Everything on bottom gets divided. So we 268 times 1, you could plug that in, you wouldn't have to, divided by 60. Your calculator tells you 4.4666 4 6, 7, if you wanted to throw some more in there, 66667. 6, 6, 6, now again, we do need to round for sig figs. The conversion factor here is exactly 60 seconds equals 1 minute. We don't have to measure that. So the only measured value here is this 268 seconds which has three sig figs. So my answer needs to have three sig figs. So rounding to the third sig fig, that would give me 4.47 minutes. That is my answer. All right, next one here. How many centimeters are in 3.055 feet? And we're told that 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. And we should use this any time we're going from English to metric or metric to English length, uh, length units. The reason is this, and I'll make a note of it here. This conversion, it is exact. There are exactly 2.54 centimeters and one inch. In other words, it's unlimited sig figs. I could put 2.540000 centimeters there if I wanted to. It is an exact conversion. So that's why I use that. All right, so we need to find how many centimeters, so question mark centimeters, are equal to 3.055 feet. So I know I have to use this equality, the, the centimeters in an inch. Well, I'm starting with feet, so I can't use that yet because neither of those units match the units I'm starting with. So I need to convert feet to one of those units. Many of you will probably recognize that the conversion I want is the conversion of 12 inches equals one foot. I can use that as a conversion factor here. I want feet to cancel, so I'll put one foot on the bottom and I'll put 12 inches on the top. Feet cancel. Now I can use this centimeters to inches conversion. I can see that one inch, which I'll put on bottom, so it'll cancel with the previous inches, equals 2.54 centimeters, which I'll put in the numerator. So inches cancel. Notice the units that we have now, centimeters, are the units we're looking for. So we're done with the problem. I just need to plug it in my calculator. And we have 3.055 times 12 times 2.54 and I get 93.1164 93.1164 my units are centimeters sig figs both of the conversion factors I used here are exact 
There are exactly 12 inches in one foot, exactly 2.54 centimeters in an inch, so those do not limit my sig figs. The only value that's measured is this initial measurement. So that is four sig figs. So I need to round my answer to four sig figs. That would be 93.12 centimeters. And there is our answer. All right, uh, taking a look at some of the other examples, uh, let's see here. Um, we're not going to do all these in this particular video. Let's jump down here to the bottom of the second page uh, and look at number eight. This is a good exercise uh, for really understanding what the heart of this dimensional analysis is, and, that, and that's units. Okay? Uh, dimensional analysis without units is, is meaningless. Uh, we have to have the units in here. All we're asked to do is to determine the units given uh, by each of these, okay, and ask us to show all canceling. So we need to look at what units are in the numerator will cancel with what other units in the denominator. So looking at question A here, I can see that kilometers will cancel with kilometers, meters will cancel with meters, centimeters will cancel with centimeters, and that will leave me the unit of inches. Question B. Let's see what we have here. I can see meters and meters will cancel. One's in the numerator, one's in the denominator. Centimeters and centimeters will cancel. And then I'm left with two kilometers in the numerator. Those don't cancel. Okay, remember anything times itself, it's going to be squared. So it would be kilometers squared per inch. Those, those would be my units. All right, looking at C. I have grams in milliliters, centimeters cubed. Notice grams would cancel. They don't have to be right next to each other. One's in the numerator, one's in the denominator. They cancel. Milliliters cancel, as would centimeters cubed. And I'm left with decimeters cubed. All right, question D. Looks like miles would cancel, as would yards, as would feet. And you're left with, many of you would probably say inches. That is not correct though. It's not inches. Notice inches is in the denominator. What we are left with is one over inches or inverse inches. This is an important point to make here because if you do a conversion factor backwards, you could get units that are inverted from what you want. And this is an easy way to recognize when you've made a mistake. So make sure you check this, these units out. Make sure you actually get the units you're looking for. Uh, not just because everything cancels and that's what you're, you're left with. Doesn't necessarily mean you ended up with what you wanted. All right, last one here. Meters cancel. Seconds cancel. Again, remember, they don't want to be right next to each other. One's in the numerator, one's in the denominator. Minutes also cancel. And that's it. And we're left with kilometers per hour. Okay, the rest of these I think I'm going to do on the second video, uh, which you guys will watch at a later date.